old world. On the train from Copenhagen to Helsingor, a tiny, deformed woman jerked on my sleeve until I stopped reading and looked up. You will see there ahead the Royal Deer Park, she said, and pointed over my shoulder to the manicured acres of startling green that streamed by. Her cheeks, though powdered and rouged, looked dry as parchment. Even her little darting tongue seemed too red, made up. In your land, you have not this, she asked. Speaking slowly, still ca caught up in my novel, I explained that in my country, we had no kings or queens and therefore no royal parks. Exactly, she said, and her white gloved hand abruptly closed my book. Here in my kingdom, you must not read. You must look. I have never read that aloud. I'm stunned by its beauty. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, there's several different things going on with that poem, but one of them is a return to a theme that I've seen in many of your poems and many of your public comments, is that uh, too often we go through life asleep or not awake, not alert. And so your poem is about this rather noble passenger on a train telling you to close the book and look around. Yeah. Yeah, it's also about her impudence. Uh, that she, she could feel she could just close my book. That she's older than I, and in some countries we, we have great respect for the old. So, uh, and I grew up respecting the old. So she felt safe that she could say and do what she wanted to say and do. And even though I was not young, I was probably, because it does grow out of a particular experience, I was probably 50 uh, or even more. But she was probably my age now, 80 or something. And, and she felt, you know, she also recognized right away that I was a visitor either from the United States or Mars, but <laughs> some place very foreign. She saw I was reading a, a book in English. Uh, so she, I think she probably assumed I was either American or English. I remember I was wearing a, an English raincoat. She may have thought I was English. And often, you know, a foreigner, like a Dane, could mistake you. They wouldn't. They wouldn't pick up on the differences in speech between an American and a, an Englishman. But, uh, yeah, what I was struck by was her impudence, which I admired. I loved it. I thought, boy, when I get to be her age, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. And so what but happened? You know, but, what? you know, I want to say what does happen to me at my age now on trains, and the trains I use the most are subway trains. It's rare that someone doesn't get up and give me his or her seat. And the other day, oh, three weeks ago or so, a young, pregnant black woman offered me her seat. And I said, I looked at her. She was very pregnant. I thought, no, no, no. <laughs> your need is greater. I, I played Philip Sidney, Sir Philip Sidney. No, your need is greater than mine. <laughs> and she sat back down. So. A guy got up and gave me a seat. I mean, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. New York is, is one of the friendliest cities in the world, I think. Mm -hmm. Extraordinarily friendly. 